Hey, so today we're going to be scientifically evaluating some of Dr. Paul Saladino's comments in a video that he published where he mentions that we should stop consuming curcumin and especially stop taking it with black pepper. If you aren't familiar with curcumin, it's an active ingredient in the plant turmeric and has been linked to a number of health benefits. Until now, it seems. As for black pepper, it helps curcumin get absorbed because the absorption of curcumin is very weak. So in brief, Dr. Saladino is a physician who specialized in psychiatry, but now has done a lot more content in relation to nutrition and overall health. So let's hear what Dr. Saladino has to say. And this is a story that I've told over and over, but it's difficult for people, it's difficult for me to communicate clearly. Curcumin, turmeric. So turmeric is a root, right? Contains an active ingredient called curcumin, which is a polyphenolic compound. As you said, humans don't absorb much curcumin. <laughs> if you eat turmeric root, which is a root, it's going to have some defense chemicals. There's, you don't absorb much curcumin. It may actually affect the gut flora in a positive way. But if you add black pepper, which is a seed, which contains compounds like piperine and other toxic compounds called saffron, but specifically piperine inhibits an enzyme in the liver called udp glucuronosyl transferase, right? Long name. It's part of our detoxification systems. And when you inhibit that enzyme with piperine and pepper, you now absorb 1,000 to 2,000 times more of the curcumin which is not what your body wants at all. And yet people are doing liposomal curcumin. They're trying to just hack their way to absorbing large amounts of polyphenols that your body does not want. And it's, it detoxifies them, they're toxins. Now, this idea that they could groom the human gut is fascinating, but don't mix it with black pepper. Okay, the first point being made is that curcumin may be a benefit to our gut, which is true. There's good evidence that our microbiome is positively affected by curcumin consumption. Most of the studies are in animals, but there are some human studies as well. For example, this pilot study indicated that some likely significant differences between the curcumin and turmeric groups versus the placebo. Admittedly, none of the measures indicated if these changes were positive or not, but considering the wealth of other research indicating positive effects on the microbiome, it seems that we can at least lean in the direction of positive effects. Okay, so Dr. Saladino is spot on here. It's also true that we don't absorb much curcumin alone. If we look at the data from this study, we can see that when people are given curcumin alone, their blood levels stay near zero, maybe a slight increase. However, as we pair curcumin plus piperin, Dr. Saladino mentions, there is a significant increase in blood levels. That speaks to two phenomena. It's always important to consider clearance and appearance when looking at concentrations of something. So how does piperin lead to this massive increase in curcuminoids in the blood? Well, according to some mechanistic studies, meaning that they're in rats because scientists can't uh, alien their way through your intestines, <laughs> piperin does have a substantial effect on reducing expression of an enzyme that Dr. Saladino mentions. This enzyme, UDP glucuronyl transferase, which I henceforth refuse to say again, so we'll abbreviate it as UGT, is an enzyme found in our intestinal cells and our liver, and is responsible for converting curcumin to an offshoot molecule resembling curcumin, but isn't the same. The idea being that curcumin is taken up by the intestinal cells, then converted, leaving very little to come out the other side of the intestines, and actually end up in the blood. Whatever does end up in the blood then gets a second whack from the liver, converting the rest. So piperin, according to this research, inhibits this enzyme UGT, along with another called sulfotransferase, known as SULT1. We can see that evidenced here. What we have here is a measurement of two enzymes, so UGT and SULT, along with a variety of isoforms, meaning different versions of the same base enzyme. The researchers have administered piperin and want to see what happens to the enzyme amounts. You can focus on the uh, dark splotches, which are the actual protein amounts as measured by Western blot, or you can save yourself some trouble and focus on the line graphs. They indicate the same thing. The relationship between the two is, what generally speaking, the smaller and lighter the splotch, the less of the enzyme is present. And we see that reflected at the six and eight hour times by both the Western image, Western being the experiment name, and the line graphs. Note that not all the isoforms are readily affected by 
piperin, but most of them do drop. These particular measures are in liver, but the same overall trend is seen with the intestinal cells. Okay, so all of that is true and the effects are transient. So piperin reduces the production of these enzymes and once piperin is gone from our system, the enzyme levels return. Either way, Dr. Saladino is correct, except I'd like to listen to some more details of the negative health effects. So let's listen on. UDP glucuronosyl transferase is part of a detoxification system in the liver that is probably going to detoxify many polyphenols. And I think curcumin is not the only one that is going to be increased with black pepper. So this is why I'm not a fan of pepper. And I don't know if I've ever, I probably should talk more about this on social media. I put salt on my food, but I never use pepper. And I will not eat food with pepper. If I go to a restaurant that has pepper, I'm scraping it off. I'm that guy. I know you guys all thought that I was that guy. You're right. I am that guy at the restaurant. This is why I can't eat barbecue in Austin, Texas, because it's covered in pepper and I scrape it off. Or, you know, I went to barbecue with George St. Pierre when he was there. We were working with Hardened Soil. He collaborates with us at Hardened Soil. And I'm scraping the barbecue pepper off. Like, I do not eat pepper. And my gut doesn't feel as good if I even get a little bit in my food. I can taste it. So pepper is a seed. It's not healthy for humans. And that's why it's damaging to the gut in multiple ways. Okay, so not as much detail as I'd hoped. We keep hearing how toxic and bad black pepper is in combination with curcumin, but we only get those statements with no explanations of what outcomes. If we look at the literature, there is a massive list of studies that indicate curcumin, including piperin, has robust positive health effects. For example, this scientific review mentions several, like improvements in arthritis, wherein researchers put people on curcumin and compared it against a drug. Curcumin not only improved rheumatoid arthritis, but outperformed the drug. Or this one, mentioning there have been studies with curcumin and depression, cognitive impairment, inflammatory bowel disease, and many other conditions. All seem to show at least preliminary, if not better, benefits of curcumin supplementation. I'll detail one study that really stuck out uh, to me up to this point. I covered this randomized control study a while back when researchers gave curcumin to pre-diabetic individuals and placebo to another group. After one year, as seen here, 16.4% of people in the placebo group developed diabetes and exactly zero individuals out of over 100 participants developed diabetes if they had consumed curcumin regularly. Look, I'm not going to claim that I've read every study on curcumin, although I plan on educating myself far more, but across literally a hundred plus studies, curcumin, including piperin, comes out as a near wonder supplement. So I would argue that we should throw out the mechanisms and look at the outcome data because it indicates a far more optimistic and realistic view of the scientific landscape. But there's one more point brought up by Dr. Saladino. So let's listen in. Oh, actually, wait, hold on. Before we do that, uh, one more word or like 50. Uh, if we remove curcumin from the equation and simply look at black pepper consumption, studies may not be quite as robust here, but what studies exist indicate health benefits of black pepper as well, like this one, wherein the researchers finished their study by concluding, and I quote, as a conclusive remark, P. nigrum, which is black pepper, should not only be regarded as king of spices, but can also be considered as part of the kingdom of medicinal agents, comprising a panoply of bioactive compounds with potential nutraceutical and pharmaceutical applications. In disclosure, I haven't yet analyzed black pepper alone, but if these researchers are to be trusted, it seems to bode pretty well. Well, we'll see with further investigation, however. One thing that we can say is that black pepper is unlikely to be worthy of being scraped off of our meals. Poor pepper only wanted to help, but to each their own. Now, let's move on. A resistant starch, not a good thing. You don't want to increase LPS in your body. Now, you know, it's funny, I was texting one of our mutual friends about this. Uh, it, 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 I'm bummed that there is no good clinical test for circulating lipopolysaccharide. If there were a way to test this, I think we would have a very powerful metric. There's an anti-LPS antibody that I talked about with Georgie Dinkov, but it's just a research metric. I can never get it because I wanted to track it. I wanted to track my anti-LPS antibody in the body. I would love to experiment with different foods, add potato to my diet or add squash to my diet or add just do fruit and honey or add mango and see, does it change this LPS? You know, like, how do I feel? 
that would be interesting to me, but there's no real way for people to measure endotoxin in the body. It's just clinical symptoms, right? Which is probably all we really need at this point. Admittedly, I'm a bit confused here. I'm not sure how the transition between black pepper and curcumin made it to the endotoxins like lipopolysaccharides, so that's LPS for short. Okay, so endotoxins are just toxic molecules within our body in the most generic sense. The most common is this lipopolysaccharide, LPS, that are found on the exterior section of what are known as gram-negative bacteria. These bacteria are found on several foods, which is why I'm assuming that Dr. Saladino is talking about it here. I suppose it's on curcumin or turmeric uh, foods or some other roots. However, what he fails to mention is that LPS is also found on bacteria that make up our microbiome. Generally, if LPS gets through our intestinal cells, which happens with leaky gut or some other forms of gut disorders, LPS leads to massive immune reactions if it enters the body in any great amount. So our intestines have many defense systems against LPS, from generating proteins that inactivate LPS, known as intestinal alkaline phosphatases or IAPs, to loose and firm barriers of mucus separating LPS from the intestinal cells, and then the intestinal cells themselves. There's much more to it than that, but that's a brief overview based on this study. So I'll cut to the punchline. If LPS somehow ends up in our blood, our immune system activates and we get a strong inflammatory response. Yet compounds like curcumin have anti-inflammatory effects. According to this scientific review, including 17 human trials, curcumin has a potent anti-inflammatory effect, including when it is separately paired with LPS, as well as in people with Crohn's disease and irritable bowel syndrome. Additionally, one of the previous reviews that we went over, the researchers mentioned that curcumin reduces LPS levels in the gut, as well as increases the number of tight junctions. So these are the proteins that link our intestinal cells together, as well as increases the expression of the IAP enzyme that we discussed earlier that inactivates LPS. So in short, I find these arguments nonsensical and not backed by the scientific literature, but you know what is backed by the scientific literature? My videos on curcumin found here, as well as my other spotlight videos of other influencers found right here. I'll meet you over there. 